Though tragedy is uncommon, at any moment, routine police work can take an unexpected turn, as partners Tom Blackshear and Gary Kaufman were reminded on the morning of October 10th, 1994, in Phoenix, Arizona. Police work certainly makes us aware of our mortality and the mortality of our loved ones. It is in the back of your mind, but it has to be in the back of your mind or you couldn't function. Tom and Gary were checking out some of the businesses in the area, and when they happened to be driving by a uh, rental storage business, they noticed a car and a couple of individuals that were acting very suspicious. Hey, Gary, go around the block. I want to take another look at that car. That was, didn't look right. When they came back around the block, the car was turned in the opposite direction, and Gary and Tom felt that they had done so in order to keep them from seeing their license plate on the car. We'll go check them out. Let's check it. 774 Adam, code six. West Indian School, a couple subjects. A code six means that the officer is going out for investigation. Usually it involves some type of suspicious activity. When we continue. We prepare for this job and everything, but I never really knew what scared to death was until this happened. Sir, can you step out for a minute? Sir, can you step out for a minute? What do we do, officer? Just need you to step out for a minute. We didn't do anything wrong. Fire Engine 18 was immediately sent to the scene, led by Captain Paramedic Charles Hood. Anytime you get a shooting, you're always geared up as far as working a trauma-type patient. But with it being a police officer, that hits close to home. When we cop get shot, our wheels spin just a little bit faster. Officer Gary Kaufman's wife, Mary, a 911 operator, was on duty that morning. Oh, yeah. You think a police officer was shot? Call right here. We saw two gentlemen running out of a storage unit shooting. Immediately, Gary flashed us through. Where's, where's, my first thought was, where's Gary at? Okay, stand on line while I get officers calling, okay? Okay. Another girl was setting up next to me, and I said to her, Amy, find out where Gary and Tom are. Radio, this would be for North Chase, uh, incident number 1643. If she thinks there's been a shooting at 23... West Indian School Road. Road. They put it out as a 999. We're going. Okay. Do you need more information from her? Uh, I think probably we've got it. Okay. Thanks. All right. I was so glad that they didn't need any information because my hands were shaking. Okay, ma'am? Yeah. Okay, we've already got a call in on this. Thanks. Uh -huh, bye bye. Hey, Mary. She said, well, Gary and Tom are at a traffic stop at 23rd Avenue in Indian School. You know, I look at my screen and... <laughs> Tom was laying down by the fence, obviously hurt. Tom Blackshear was a 15-year veteran of the force. You gotta help me. Come on. My idea at the time wasn't even first aid. I just wanted to get away from these people. Come on, keep talking. He's telling me, hey, I've been hit, my arm's burning, it's on fire, my arm really hurts. Here, I left my gun over there. Where? My gun. All right, I'll get my gun. I never really knew what scared to death was until this happened. We prepare for this job and everything, but you never really think anybody's going to get hurt. Don't Keep move. talking. Don't Keep talking. Don't he was fading in and out right. of consciousness. And he said, I feel like I might be hurt down here a little bit or something on his left chest area. And so I looked down there, and I could see his shirt was torn. It was like right by his pocket. Oh, be careful, my There was still a piece of the round stuck in the vest. Just keep talking to me, Tom. 
and the hole in his chest was like the size of a dime or a nickel. I knew he wouldn't die from an arm wound, but when I saw the hole in his chest, I knew that was very serious, very serious. There were people there I haven't seen in three or four years. They were coming from everywhere. It was just such a relief to see somebody that you knew. It was pretty chaotic. There were officers frantically waving us over. They hadn't caught these two suspects. And so it's, it's a tense situation. Okay, deep breath, all right? You short of breath? No. Okay, let's get that arms on fire, man. Okay, okay, one more time, deep breath. Out of all the shootings I've ever had, I can't remember anyone actually wearing a vest, but there was a significant amount of trauma done, even with the vest on. Okay, okay, open your eyes for me. For you open your okay, eyes, top side. He's been shot in the chest and once in the left, left arm. arm. All right. <laughs> While officers searched the area for the suspects, Tom was taken to St. Joseph's Hospital and Medical Center, where he was treated by trauma surgeon Dale Stanford. Deep breath, Tom. The injury to his chest was a blunt type of injury from the impact of the bullet uh, hitting his vest. But fortunately, the wound was not sucking, so he had no penetration in the chest wall. Clear bilaterally. We need chest x-ray. If he had not been wearing his vest, he had a lethal injury. The chest wound would have penetrated his heart area. The vest saved his life. Tom's wife, Patricia, joined him as soon as she was notified of the shooting. He was in a tremendous amount of pain, especially in his arm. I was trying to find a place to touch him because his arm was bandaged, his chest was bandaged, and of course he had IVs and things all over him. But I was assured because he was talking, he was awake. I knew that he was all right. There is no substitute for the bulletproof vest. You don't have a second chance to go put it on. You're either wearing it or you get hit. And I did it as kind of a last minute thing. Something told me to put the vest inside my shirt. That was the smartest thing I ever did in my life. Where did it hit you? I can't even describe the feeling when I got home that night. I have two little boys and a little girl. I love going to work. And I love the people I work with, but that was the one time I questioned, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Three months later, 51-year-old Tom Blackshear is completely recovered and returned to work. Two suspects were subsequently arrested in connection with the shooting and are awaiting trial. The shooting was October 10th, and my birthday was October 11th. And I had the most wonderful birthday present. My husband was alive. See ya! Hi, old queen! We told you it went around the rim. Tom and I do a lot stuff together on and off the job both. We go golfing together all the time. We're good friends. I mean, you spend eight hours a day with a guy, you tell him your worst jokes, he still laughs. Two! I mean, I love the guy. What can you say? He's my partner. I trust him and he trusts me. Oh, it's closer than what you. happened? <laughs>